So I decided to split my Discord server up and put them against each other. And it was a rather fun and interesting experience. So basically I made two teams, one of demons and one of demon slayers. And both teams was tasked with coming up with 10 custom power systems of their respective groups. With the demon slayers coming up with breathing styles and the demons coming up with blood demon arts. And now my job is to decide which team won in terms of creativity. If you haven't already, you should definitely join my Discord server and be a part of videos like this. Because I'm not gonna lie, it was pretty fun to watch. Even though like a day into the challenge, it kinda got racist, but I digress. So how I'm going about this, I'm gonna go through all the breathing styles and then all the blood demon arts. I'm gonna tell you what I think about each breathing style and blood demon art separately and I'll tell you what I think about all 10 of their power systems as a whole for both the breathing styles and the blood demon arts. So let me stop wasting you guys time and get straight into the breathing style. Alright for my first breathing style I have one called Berserker Breathing and it wasn't really specified what breathing style this derives from so I'm just gonna make one up myself and just say Beast Breathing. But basically this style taps into Primal Rage allowing users to grow stronger as they take damage. It emphasizes raw power and ferocity with forms like Beast Fury that unleash chaotic attacks. The risk reward dynamic adds tension as users must balance aggression with the risk of losing control. I think Berserker Breathing is a fascinating concept because it taps into the primal nature of combat, where rage and pain fuel power. This style flips the typical power up trope on its head by making damage a source of strength. It invokes the image of a warrior who becomes more formidable as they embrace their fury, adding a layer of unpredictability to battles. The psychological aspect is also intriguing. The internal struggle between maintaining control and succumbing to rage can lead to intense character development. This duality adds depth, making the user's journey as much about mastering themselves as defeating demons. However, I worry about how this style fits into the broader themes of Demon Slayer. The potential for losing control contradicts the disciplined nature of Demon Slayers and could lead to mistrust within a team. This internal conflict might undermine the series' emphasis on unity and cooperation. There's also a risk of narrative repetition. If losing control becomes a frequent plot device, it might lose its impact over time. Additionally, balancing this style's power without overshadowing others could be challenging. But for my next breathing style, I have one called Combustion Breathing. And this style derives from sound breathing. So this style incorporates unconventional weapons like butcher knives and a shotgun. The style focuses on explosive power and versatility. It combines close range slashing with long range explosive attacks, offering a fresh take on combat that breaks away from traditional sword play. Combustion breathing stands out with its bold integration of modern weaponry like shotguns alongside traditional blades. This mix allows for explosive power and versatility in combat offering dynamic scenarios where fighters can seamlessly switch between close range slashing and long range attacks. The thematic possibilities are exciting too. Fire and explosive symbolize destruction, yet in the hands of a demon slayer they become tools for protection. This duality could reflect the character's struggle to control and direct their destructive power for good. Despite its innovation, I think combustion breathing might feel anachronistic in demon slayer's historical setting. The introduction of firearms could disrupt the series aesthetic and pull viewers out of its carefully crafted world. Balancing this style with others is also a concern. Firearms might overshadow traditional swordsmanship in terms of raw firepower, potentially making other breathing techniques seem obsolete. But on to my next breathing style, I have one called Steel Breathing, and this style derives from Love and Wind Breathing. This style utilizes a multi-bladed Udemy to showcase fluid movements and precise strikes. It balances offense and defense, allowing for intricate combat strategies that adapt to various situations, reflecting both aggression and protection. Steel Breathing captivates me with the use of the Udemy, a flexible whip-like sword that allows for fluid and unpredictable movements. This weapon choice sets it apart from the other styles, adding an element of dance to combat that's both graceful and fierce. The combination of love and wind breathing suggests a style that balances aggression with elegance, offering visually stunning techniques that adapt to various situations. However, Mastering the Udemy requires exceptional skill, which might limit accessibility to only the most adept slayers. This could create disparities in power levels among characters. There's also a risk that the style might feel too showy for practical combat. Maintaining believability while showcasing such intricate techniques could be challenging. But on to my next breathing style. I have one called Blossom Breathing, and this derives from Wind and Flower Breathing. So this style merges grace with lethality, emphasizing swift movements and precision strikes inspired by nature. It adds an artistic dimension to combat with techniques that are both beautiful and deadly. 
capturing the elegance of blossoms. Blossom Breathing is beautifully creative with its focus on precision strikes inspired by nature's elegance. It merges grace with lethality, potentially creating visually stunning moments in battle that highlight the contrast between beauty and violence. The emphasis over skill over strength is refreshing, rewarding timing and precision rather than brute force. This approach encourages strategic thinking and clever battle tactics. I'm concerned about its effectiveness against tougher demons though, with higher durability. Without raw power, this style might struggle in high stakes battles where brute force is necessary. Integrating such an elegant style into intense combat scenes might require careful choreography to maintain impact without feeling out of place in the series' often brutal context. Alright, for my next breathing style, I have one called Draconic Breathing. And this breathing style derives from flame and thunder breathing. Integrating dual styles with dragon inspired techniques, this breathing style offers flexibility and thematic depth. It allows for diverse combat strategies that reflect personal growth and the mystical power associated with dragons. Draconic breathing excites me with its mystical inspiration. This approach allows for diverse combat strategies in various situations, reflecting personal growth and mystical powers. The dragon motif adds to an element of mysticism and strength that enhances character development and ties into deeper lore about the origins of demons and breathing styles. However, the consumption aspect blurs the line between Slayer and Demon too much for my liking. It risks undermining the core conflict of maintaining humanity against demonic threats. I don't know if it's just me, but I'm personally not too much of a fan of the common anime trope of the main character becoming like the enemy to defeat the enemy. Moving on to my next breathing style, I have one called Calamity Breathing, and this style derives from Stone Breathing. Utilizing temperature control, this style manipulates the pace of battle strategically. The chilling effects create opportunities for psychological warfare by instilling fear or hesitation in opponents, emphasizing strategy over brute force. This style embodies raw power of natural disasters, using thematic attacks that mimic earthquakes and storms. It creates an epic scale of destruction, enhancing storytelling by reflecting the user's emotional state or personal struggles. Calamity Breathing is a bold and powerful concept that harnesses the destructive forces of nature, such as earthquakes and storms. I think this style is incredibly creative because it transforms the battlefield into a dynamic environment where the user can unleash large scale attacks that reflect their emotional state or personal struggles. The thematic resonance of using nature's chaos against demons is compelling. It suggests a style that embodies both destruction and protection, turning natural disasters into a tool for maintaining balance and order. However, the potential for collateral damage is a significant concern for this style. Using techniques that mimic natural disasters could endanger civilians and allies, conflicting with the Demon Slayer's mission to protect humanity. The power level also poses a challenge for narrative balance. If not carefully regulated, this style could overshadow others, making it difficult to maintain tension in battles or justify why the user isn't resolving every crisis single-handedly. But on to my next breathing style. I have one called Glacier Breathing. And this breathing style derives from water breathing. Utilizing temperature control, this style manipulates the pace of battle strategically. The chilling effects create opportunities for psychological warfare by instilling fear or hesitation in opponents emphasizing strategy over brute force. Glacier Breathing captivates me with its focus on temperature manipulation and strategic control. The ability to create icy landscapes and freeze opponents introduces psychological warfare. I think the emphasis on controlling the environment adds a layer of tactical depth, allowing users to dictate the pace of battle and force opponents into unfavorable positions. This strategic approach encourages thoughtful engagement rather than relying solely on brute force. One limitation is its effectiveness in warm environments. If this style relies heavily on cold conditions, it might struggle on heat or fire based attacks that are pretty prevalent in Demon Slayer. Additionally, maintaining consistent tension in prolonged engagement could be challenging if the freezing effect diminishes over time. Users may need to rely on support from allies or alternate strategies to sustain their effectiveness. Alright, for my next breathing style, I have one called Steam Breathing, which derives from water, flame, and mist breathing. Now, this style blends these three elements for dynamic combat scenarios. It focuses on endurance and explosive power, providing flexibility in both offense and defense. Steam Breathing intrigues me with its fusion of water, flame, and mist breathing into a cohesive combat style. 
This blend allows for a highly adaptable approach to battle, where users can shift between different states of water, changing to steam and back again. It suggests a fluidity and versatility that could be incredibly effective in various combat scenarios. What excites me the most is the potential for misdirection and deception. Steam can obscure vision, create mirages, or even scald enemies with sudden bursts of heat. This opens up a range for tactical possibilities for both offense and defense, allowing users to control not only their own movements, but but also manipulate opponents' perceptions. However, there are several potential drawbacks to steam breathing that concern me. One major issue is the complexity involving the mastering three elements aspects simultaneously. It might be challenging to justify how a character becomes proficient in such a multifaceted style without extensive training or experience. I'm also worried about how the style would balance power and sustainability. The energy required to generate steam could take a significant toll on the user's stamina over time, potentially making it unsustainable for prolonged engagements without adequate recovery periods. Alright, but on to my next breathing style, and probably my favorite breathing style out of all of them. I have one called Phobia Breathing. Now this one says it's derived from moon breathing, but I'm not going to accept that and just say it derived from insect breathing. Now this style combines psychological elements with poison based attacks. This style targets both mind and body. Each form reflects different phobias, adding depth to character interactions by exploiting opponent's fears. Now phobia breathing is a fascinating concept that delves into psychological warfare, which I find incredibly creative. The idea of a breathing style that targets an opponent's deepest fears adds to a unique psychological layer to combat. It's not just about physical prowess, but also mental manipulation, which can be both terrifying and captivating. What intrigues me the most is how this style could exploit specific phobias, tailoring attacks to each opponent's vulnerabilities. Imagine a user who can sense and amplify fears, causing hallucinations or illusions that paralyze enemies with terror. This could lead to some intense and mind-bending fight scenes where reality blurs with nightmares. However, there are several challenges associated with phobia breathing that concern me. One major issue is the effectiveness against emotionless and fearless opponents. If a demon has transcended human emotion, the fear-based attacks might be rendered ineffective, potentially limiting the style's impact in crucial battles. There's also a moral ambiguity here that troubles me. Using psychological warfare that poisons feels at odds with the noble image of demon slayers. It might be difficult for viewers to root for a character employing such tactics especially if they seem overly cruel or manipulative. It wouldn't really be an issue for me, but to each his own. But moving on to my last breathing style, I have one called Death Breathing. And this style derives from Insect Breathing. This style focuses on precision stabs and hallucinogenic effects to disorient opponents. It leverages deception as a primary tactic creating openings for strategic strikes through confusion and fear. What excites me the most about this breathing style is the potential for hallucinogenic effects that disorient opponents. This could lead to some truly mind-bending fight scenes where reality and illusion blur, keeping both characters and viewers on the edge. The strategic use of illusions could create openings for precision strikes that are as lethal as they are unexpected. The emphasis on precision stabs rather than broad attacks suggests a level of skill and finesse that I find refreshing. It's about finding the perfect moment to strike rather than overwhelming an opponent with sheer power, which could lead to some incredibly satisfying victories when executed well. However, there are several potential drawbacks to death breathing that concern me. The dark theme might feel out of place in Demon Slayer's generally hopeful tone. While the series does explore dark themes, this style might push some boundaries further than intended. I'm also worried about the viability against multiple opponents or in chaotic battle scenarios. The focus on precision strikes makes it seem more suited for one-on-one -on -one duels rather than large-scale conflicts where rapid adaptation is required. Alright, now I got the Demon Slayer team out of the way. Let me get into the demon team. Alright, for my first blood demon art that I have, I have one called Mercurial Flux. This ability allows a demon to control liquid metal, aka mercury, shaping it into weapons and shields. This versatile manipulation allows for both offense and defense strategies. And this power reflects the demon's past as a blacksmith obsessed with mercury's properties, leading to madness for mercury poisoning. Now this ability is incredibly versatile, enabling the creation of weapons and defenses on the fly. The imagery of a demon crafting blades or shields from shimmering mercury is both visually stunning and strategically intriguing. What excites me the most is how the ability ties into the demon's backstory as a blacksmith, 
It adds a layer of depth to the character, suggesting that their obsession with crafting has transcended to their demonic form. This connection between past and present enhances the narrative, making the demon's abilities feel like an extension of their identity. However, there are significant challenges with Mercurial Flux. I'm mainly concerned about how this ability would fare against multiple agile opponents. While Mercury can be shaped quickly, it might struggle to keep up with fast moving targets or those who can attack from a distance. Lastly, there's a narrative challenge in balancing this power in the Demon Slayer universe. The versatility of Mercury manipulation could make it difficult to present credible threats without making other abilities seem less impactful by comparison. Moving on to my second Blood Demon arc, I have one called Titanfall. This ability allows demons to adjust their body's density, switching between super speed and titanic strength. This allows for rapid movement or powerful durable attacks. This ability relates to the demon's past as a martial artist obsessed with becoming the strongest, pushing his body to its limits until it broke. Now the concept of switching between super speed and titanic strength offers a unique duality that can be leveraged in various combat scenarios. It's like having two distinct fighting styles in one providing both agility and power as needed. What I find particularly intriguing is how this ability reflects a demon's past as a martial artist obsessed with strength. It suggests that their pursuit of physical perfection has continued into their demonic existence, manifesting as an ability to control their own mass with precision. However, one major concern is the reduced mobility when in high density form. While it provides strength and durability, it might leave the user vulnerable to ranged attacks and agile foes who can exploit their slower movements. Additionally, there's a risk of over-reliance on this duality. If not balanced carefully within the narrative, Titanfall could overshadow other blood demon arts by offering too much versatility without enough trade-offs. Moving on to my next blood demon art, and I gotta say the demon team took into account my love for eye abilities in anime, because if you guys couldn't tell already, I absolutely love eye abilities in anime. There's something inherently captivating about the idea that eyes can be more than just organs of perception. They become weapons, tools of manipulation, and windows into a character's deepest nature. But anyways, let me stop wasting time and get into the next Blood Demon art. I have one called Eyes of Severance, and that name alone is just peak fiction. But this ability gives the demon 10 ethereal eyes providing 360 degree vision and the ability to infiltrate an enemy's perception, turning their vision against them. This ability reflects the demon's past as a military strategist who desired total awareness on the battlefield, now achieved through these ghostly eyes. Now I find this concept incredibly creative because it transformed the battlefield into a strategic playground where the demon can anticipate and counter attacks from any direction. The potential for manipulating an opponent's perception is particularly intriguing. Imagine creating illusions or distorting reality to confuse and disorient foes turning their own senses against them. This could lead to some intense, mind-bending combat scenarios where nothing is as it seems. However, I'm worried about how this power would be balanced within the narrative. The ability to see everything and manipulate perception could make it difficult to present credible threats unless there are clear limitations or counters in place. But that's pretty much the only critique I have for this one. But I might be biased with this one. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. But this one has to be my favorite. But moving on to my next Blood Demon art. I have one called Scarlet Fog. This ability allows the demon to create a noxious red mist that distorts time perception for those who inhale it, causing debilitating lag effects. This ability ties to the demon's history as a potions dealer who secretly poisoned those he disliked, now manifesting as a toxic mist that controls the battlefield. I find this concept fascinating because it combines environmental manipulation with psychological warfare creating a unique battlefield advantage. What I love most about this ability is its potential for strategic use. The mist can obscure vision, slow down opponent's reactions, and create opportunities for surprise attacks. It turns the environment into an ally, allowing the demon to control the pace and flow of combat. The thematic connection to the demon's past as a potion dealer adds depth to their character. It suggests that their knowledge of toxins and chemicals has been twisted into something far more dangerous in their demonic form. However, there's a narrative challenge in maintaining tension when facing opponents who can quickly adapt or counteract the fog's effects. Ensuring that battles remain engaging despite their potential counters will require careful storytelling. But on to my next Blood Demon art. I have one called Blight of the Frozen Fallen. This ability allows the demon to manipulate temperature to freeze anything in proximity instantly, creating ice-based attacks and defenses. This ability reflects the demon's past isolation and resentment towards others, using cold as both a literal and metaphorical barrier. 
Now I'm sure this comes as a shock to no one, but what fascinates me most about this ability is the demon's past, isolation, and resentment. The cold being represented both literally and metaphorically serves as a barrier between the demon and the world, symbolizing their emotional detachment. This thematic connection adds depth to the character, making their powers an extension of their inner turmoil. Now, the visual potential for this blood demon art is immense. Imagine a battlefield transformed into a frozen wasteland, with icy spikes and barriers appearing at will. This could lead to some visually stunning and dynamic fight scenes where the environment itself becomes a weapon. However, one major concern is its vulnerability to heat-based attacks or environments. In warm settings, this ability might be significantly weaker, potentially limiting its effectiveness. And now that I think about it, how are Demon Slayers going to get past a demon who can freeze things? Because balancing this power within a Demon Slayer verse is kind of tricky. The ability to freeze everything could make it difficult to present credible threats without making other abilities seem less impactful by comparison. But what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments about it. Moving on to my next Blood Demon art, I have one called Graft. This ability allows a demon to copy opponents' breathing styles by absorbing their DNA, enhancing these techniques with demonic power. This ability represents the demon's past failure to master any breathing style as a human, now able to mimic and amplify them through demonic transformation. So kind of like a more pathetic version of Kaigeku. Nah, but this blood demon art is kind of cool. It introduces an element of mimicry and adaptation that can turn opponent's strengths against them. The idea of enhancing these techniques with demonic power adds a layer of complexity and danger. Like imagine he's fighting up against some demon slayers with a technique he already copied and is getting absolutely washed and he ends up absorbing one of their DNA to copy their technique and he's just sitting there ready to fight the rest like alright, I understand it now. And then he proceeds to just wash all the demon slayers. This one's pretty funny. The only major criticism I have for this one is how it could be balanced in the demon slayer world. The ability to copy any breathing style and on top of that enhance it with demonic powers could be a little overpowered. And again, the idea of mimicking other breathing styles could get repetitive at times because nobody really wants to see a Demon Slayer fight up against another version of their own breathing style, even if it's an enhanced version of it. But moving on to my next Blood Demon art, I have one called Unholy Metamorph. This ability allows a demon to regenerate lost body parts with monstrous appendages that grow stronger with each injury sustained. This ability mirrors the demon's past arrogance and disbelief in his invincibility, now reflected in his grotesque regeneration abilities. Now, I might not be the smartest person in the world, but can't demons already do this? Like, I don't know if I just don't know what I'm talking about, but I'm pretty sure that demons can do this already. Like, I don't think they have to look how they choose to look. I'm pretty sure they can look however they want to look. They can grow their limbs however they want to grow their limbs, I'm pretty sure. I don't know, that's just something I might have to do research on. But that's besides the point. Now the visual potential of this ability is both terrifying and captivating. Imagine a demon that literally reshapes itself mid-battle, growing extra limbs, mutating into extremely nightmarish forms. This could lead to some truly shocking and memorable fight scenes that push the boundaries of body horror. And I'm probably the most affected person by th gross things that happen with the body. But one major concern is there's a narrative challenge in maintaining the demon's character identity as they undergo such radical physical changes. Ensuring that the core personality remains intact while showcasing these dramatic transformations will definitely be a tough task. But moving on to my next blood demon art, I have one called Angel. This ability allows a demon to embody an angelic figure with wings and a halo, using light-based powers for support and control over enemies. This ability reflects the demon's former life as a priestess seeking divine power, now twisted into an angelic facade hiding her corrupted nature. Now this one was a great idea because it plays on the irony of a demon embodying divine imagery, creating a striking visual and thematic contrast. What fascinates me the most is how this ability reflects the past as a priestess seeking divine power. The transformation becomes a twisted manifestation of their spiritual aspirations, now corrupted into a demonic form that mimics heavenly attributes. The visual potential of this is actually breathtaking. Imagine a demon with radiant wings and a halo, using light as both a weapon and a means of control. This can lead to some visually stunning and thematically rich battle sequences. However, the sacrificial nature of its ultimate move is, uh, limits its narrative use due to permanent consequences, potentially creating a one-time use ability that might feel anticlimactic. I'm also concerned about how this power will be balanced in the larger narrative. It's kinda gonna be hard to ensure that this power doesn't become too overpowered or feel like a deus ex machina and a solution to conflicts. But moving on to my next Blood Demon art, I have one called 
Dreadful Red Eye. This allows the demon to transform into a gunslinger with perfect accuracy and power, using revolvers that never miss their target. This reflects the demon's past as a notorious gunslinger who never missed his mark, now amplified by the demonic precision. Alright, now what excites me most about this ability is that the transformation into a demon has amplified this person's skills to supernatural levels, making them an even more formidable opponent. These connections between their human skill and demonic powers add depth to their character, making them both relatable and terrifying. The visual potential is striking. Imagine a demon with glowing red eyes that lock onto targets with unearing precision, firing bullets that never miss. This could lead to some intense cinematic fight scenes where every shot counts. Like imagine a demon version of Dead shot or a demon version of Lady Nagant. However, one major concern is the reliance on firearms, which might feel out of place in the traditional setting focused on swordsmanship and historical aesthetics. I'm worried about how this power will be balanced within the narrative. The ability to hit any target with perfect accuracy could make it difficult to present credible threats. But finally, I have my last blood demon art, and it's called Miss Mastermind. Now this ability uses seductive manipulation to alter memories and control opponents through flirtation psychological tactics. Tied to her past as a loving wife who was driven mad by her grief after losing her family, now using her allure to manipulate others. Now I find this concept incredibly creative because who doesn't love mental manipulation over physical confrontation? This ability creates a unique approach to combat that focuses on strategy and deception. So basically we would get a Makima in Demon Slayer and who doesn't love that? What fascinates me the most about this ability is how it reflects the demon's past as a loving wife. Her seductive allure becomes a tool for manipulation, allowing her to exploit emotions and memories to bend others to her will. This connection between her tragic past past and her powers adds depth to her character, making her both sympathetic and dangerous at the same time. The thematic potential is rich with this ability. Imagine a demon who can alter memories and create illusions that play on opponents deepest desires or fears. This could lead to some psychologically intense encounters where the lines between reality and illusions blur. But there's a moral ambiguity here that might make it difficult for viewers to root for a character who uses such tactics, especially if they seem overly cruel or manipulative. Well, unless they look like Makima then they'll probably let it pass. But more strongly there's a risk of redundancy in storytelling. If every encounter becomes centered around psychological manipulation, the novelty could wear off if it's not handled with creativity and variety, potentially leading to repetitive plot lines. Alright now that I got all the breathing styles out of the way and the blood demon arts out of the way, let me tell you how I think both teams did as a whole and who I think wins this. I think the demon slayer team really shines in how they take traditional concepts and infuse them with fresh perspectives. There's something incredibly compelling on how they manage to innovate with the constraints of being human. For example, berserker breathing's primal rage taps into something raw and emotional while Blossom Breathing offers a beautiful juxtaposition of grace and lethality. These styles not only provide visually stunning combat sequences, but also deepen character development through thematic connections. What impresses me the most is how these styles maintain a balance between creativity and narrative fit. They respect the established world of Demon Slayer, enhancing it with new layers without straying too far from its core themes. The elegance of steel breathing and the strategic depth of glacier breathing feel like a natural extension of what we've come to love about the series. On the other hand, I think the demon team showcases an incredible range of creativity, thanks to their supernatural nature. Abilities like Mercurial Flux and Scarlet Fog are not only visually arresting, but also offer complex strategic possibilities. The way these powers tie into each demon's backstory adds a rich narrative depth that I find fascinating. However, this freedom can be a double-edged sword. Some abilities risk being overpowered, like Dreadful Red Eyes, Perfect Accuracy, or Grass Mimicry. Balancing these powers within the story is crucial, and I think it can be challenging to maintain consistency without overshadowing other elements of the narrative. So overall, when comparing both teams, I think the Demon Slayer team comes out on top in terms of creativity. They manage to innovate within limitations while staying true to the series' essence. Their ability to blend new ideas with established themes create a harmonious expansion of the world we know and love. Now don't get me wrong, the Blood Demon Arts are undeniably creative and offer exciting possibilities. But their potential for imbalance and narrative disruption make them a bit harder to integrate smoothly into the story. Now in this creative showdown, I feel that the Demon Slayer team wins for their elegant balance of innovation and coherence within the Demon Slayer universe. And yeah, that's all I got. If you guys want to check out the custom breathing styles and the custom blood demon art in full detail, you can join my Discord server. All of it will be sitting in there. And if you guys really enjoyed this video, you should leave a like on it and subscribe if you're new. 
And leave a comment and let me know your favorite breathing style and blood demon art. And yeah, I'll see you guys the next time I pop up on your homepage. So with that being said, uh, yeah. Had it all in this one day I don't really wanna change, I don't tell the truth I don't really see a point if I don't trust you I know how you wanna feel, I bet you wanna hear I bet you wanna see if anything can be real uh -huh.